Okay, now I'm naming these. There's so many different compounds, but I'm going to go through uh, a lot of different ones, try to come up with a, enough of a variety so you get a feel for it. But here it's the ion, and what we do is we look at uh, what we do uh, when we have the formula is we name the ligands first with their um, with a prefix, and if there's more than one uh, ligand, we put them in alphabetical order. But here there's only one. It's carbonyl, so we call it hexa carbonyl. And this is a bad one as well. Hexa carbonyl. Now we have tungsten here, W. And it's part of a, the cation, so we leave the name alone. We call it hexacarbonyl tungsten. But then we also need to know its oxidation state. These are, carbonyls are um, neutral, so the charge must be the same as the charge on the complex. So this is tungsten 3. And then you need to put ion. Make sure you put ion in there. So hexacarbonyl tungsten 3 ion. Now we have an ant, so this is a cation. We leave the metal name alone. But when it is it, the metal is part of a cation or an anion, we have to change this uh, this name. So, but first we name the ligands, uh, and it's five, so we call it penta cyano. And again, there's only one type of ligand here, so nice and easy. Penta cyano. Now this is cobalt. If this was a plus three, then we call it cobalt, just cobalt three. But because it's part of an anion, we call it cobaltate, um, and that's, this is uh, minus 5, so this would be cobaltate 2 ion. Now the cobalt has a plus 2 charge, but it's part of an anion, so we have to name it with the change, just like we do for sodium chloride. We leave sodium alone, so we leave the metal alone for the cation, but the chloride changed, chlorine changed to chloride, and here we change it to ATE. Now we have iron, and it, it's part of an anion, so, and, but now there's two different kinds of ligands. We have bromo and chloro, so we do dibromo. And if you run out of room, you can go to the second line. I'll try not to do that, but then we have four chlorine, so tetra chloro. Now, we don't call this, because it's an uh, anion, we, don't, uh, we have iron here. We, we don't call it ironate, we call it ferrate. So you got so there's a, a table in your book that has uh, think about let's see let's see them here one two three they have six of the metal uh, atoms or metals that we change the name uh, if it becomes an anion most of them like cobalt we just add an ATE to it but there's some that you need to know uh, that have that uh, have a different name they go by the Latin name so ferrous for iron. And then this is uh, minus 6. So I, I'm going to do this pretty fast, finding the charge here on the iron. Because there's all of these are have minus 1 charge. There's 6 of them. So, and the, they add to minus 3, so it's plus 3. So you have to be able to do it fast. I'm not going to slow down because of that. This is something that is straight out of 1170. It's just an un, unusual looking ion. So just uh, make sure that you can find the oxidation state for the metal ion. Here, water has uh, zero for its oxidation state, so this must be plus three for the iron. It's part of a cation, so we're going to leave the iron name alone, and this would be hexa aqua iron three ion. Now, I'm going to make this one um, into something that is uh, a compound. Here's one that is a compound. We have sodium and then we have the anion so we're going to name it like we would any ionic compound that's all we're doing is using kind of expanding on the ionic compound uh, nomenclature so this is sodium no need to put trisodium because from the charges we're going to be able to determine what that charge is this is silver it's an anion so it's argentate we're going to call it fluorine and hydroxo so this would be fluoro um, we're going to separate the name just like we would for sodium chloride. You know, for the, the anion and the cation are separated. So sodium fluoro uh, trihydroxo argentate. And then we have three, four. So this is going to be a plus three total here. This is a, a minus four, so that means that the argentate is, is one. 
the metal, as I said, has to be either positive, and it can be zero, but that's it. It can't be negative. So if you come up with a negative charge on this, you've done something wrong. Or during the exam, if you find it is negative, come on up, because I've done something wrong. Now, this is a chromium, and then we have the ethylene diamine. The reason I put this one in here is because I want you to recognize uh, the, the, another rule that we have. Since ethylene diamine already has di as part of its name, we wouldn't want to call this, uh, there were two of them, we wouldn't want to call it diethylene diamine because there's actually a polydentate ligand with that name. So to indicate that we're dealing with, um, that, that ethylene diamine is one word, we come up with a, a new form of um, prefix. Two is bis, three is tris, and four is tetricus but only for this guy, though I've seen it with other polydentate ligands. Anything that, well, I guess any polydentate ligand where it, it might, that has a di in it or a tri, something that would make you, would be confusing. You'd want to use this different, uh, these different terms. So, now, so if we look at this, this would be called tris ethylene diamine, and you don't really, uh, I think the book uses the, the, uh, Parentheses, you don't have to, but that, that does help out as well. So tris ethylene diamine, uh, so this is, uh, this must be plus four, so this is chromium four, because we don't change it to chromate because it's the cation, and then we just call it chloride. And if you're given the name, uh, knowing the charge on the chloride is minus one, and knowing this information, you should be able to find the, uh, um, the formula. So... Hold on just a second, and then, yeah, let's do, let's go back the other way. <clears throat> so we have uh, potassium hexacyanoferrate. Potassium is plus one, so we don't know how many we have yet, so let's write it out. So now, this time, ferrate, so iron uh, is first, and then we put um, a hexacyano, so that. And we know iron is plus two, there's six, uh, of the cyanos, which are minus one each, so that's going to be a minus four total. So this would be KF4. Just checking six, seven, six, so minus four, yeah. And then, so we didn't have to put tetra potassium because from the charges we can figure it out. Okay, now this is the cation. That name is comes first, and then we end with chloride. So we put our complex together, and then we figure out how many chlorides we need to balance the uh, the the formula. So we have platinum, uh, dichloro, tetraamine. Now there's no there's no need to put the uh, uh, put the ligands in alphabetical order in the formulas because sometimes you, you might want the amine on the end just to make it easier to show a reaction. And when we do, we have chlorine inside of the complex like this, that too means that the Cl, it's two separate chlorides. Students see that and they see chlo the chlorine molecule. Nope. This means that, I mean, you could put it like this if you wanted just to indicate that there's two, two chloride ions. But that should be enough when you see Cl2 to tell you inside of these square brackets, and you always need the square brackets, that they are two separate chloride ions. So this is uh, plus four. This is neutral. There's two here, so there must be two on the outside. Okay, hexachloroplatinate uh, ion. So since it's platinate, we know that it should be a negative ion when we're done. Let's see if that's right. So platinum, hexachloro, so that's six chlorine. Um, it's a four here, plus four, and then there's six chlorine, each one minus one, so this should be uh, a minus two ion. And put the square brackets around it. Sometimes you'll see it like this. And that's fine because there's six chlorines, so there's really no doubt that it's complex. But if it was PT, if it wasn't, and platinum uh, only forms these, generally forms these, uh, these complexes. But if you saw something like this, you can be sure if that's a complex or just a regular ionic compound. So we want to be careful. I always like to put the brackets around it no matter what. Tetrabromovanidate. So that one is a little trickier. Vanidate, what would that be? Vanadium, and it's ATE, so that must mean that it ends 
with a negative sign. Tetrabromo. Uh, it's going to be a minus 2 again. And yeah, there's really no confusion if you do that as well. All right, and of course, there's many, many other examples. I could go do this, uh, you know, a couple hours worth and, and keep coming up with new ones, different ones, different um, transition metals, different ligands. There's, there's a lot more ligands that, than, uh, out there than are in our book. And so there's a lot of possibilities. We can mix and match uh, two or three or four or five or six or more ligands into the same complex, you know, so it, it can get pretty wild, but the, same, the rules apply uh, to all of them.